Today, we're taking a look at a product that makes big promises from a tiny little package, the Stride FootPod. Six point three one miles, eight minutes, fifty four seconds per mile today. Some absolutely wonderful conditions. Six degrees Fahrenheit. Super cold. Running in the Pegasus thirty five shields along the lakefront. I'm not sure that it was actually snowing today, but we had some crazy winds coming in, making the snow pick up off the ground and throw it at me sideways. Uh, I was head to toe covered, I had my balaclava on, ski goggles on, uh, everything was covered to the extent that I could, and it definitely felt cold. And uh, I was struggling to get in those miles today. There was definitely a point where uh, I was about four miles in and I was wondering if I hadn't made a huge mistake. Even news crews were out uh, trying to film how cold it actually was. I think they were doing like an uh, like a lighting share. A whole bunch of them had kind of lined up over by the lakefront, set up some lights so they could get their shots, uh, and then they all took shots. They kind of took turns, and then they hopped back in their cars and drove away. So super cold day, but a lot of fun out there. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I also ran in the stride foot pod today uh, and I've been running in it for a while. I've had it for about a week and a half, gone through nine recorded runs with the foot pod and I wanted to do that on purpose. Normally I try to shoot from the hip with a lot of the reviews that I do and then give you a follow up. But for this, this is something that was pretty new to me. The only other foot pod I've come in contact with uh, has been the ones built into the Under Armour uh, CGR hover CGR mid uh, that I ran in earlier. And that's just kind of a basic foot pod. It can pair with your phone to give you both uh, distance and uh, like a GPS tracing and that foot pod could also give you cadence and stride length and a lot of that data and it comes uh, at a basically uh, an additional ten dollars of a price compared to the shoe that you're already buying but that's built into your shoe that's locked in this is something that can clip onto the top of your shoe and you could switch it up which is useful for people like me uh, who test a whole bunch of different shoes so I've run on it in the epic react 2, the Zante pursuits uh, the Pegasus 35 Shield. I think I had them on the Ghost 11 GTX. So three or four different pairs of shoes in just the amount of time that I have had them on. Um, and so getting a variety of experiences. Uh, and the, basically the, the main thing that it does in addition uh, to providing stuff that you can get in other foot pods is that it has uh, something called a, a power number. And, and what that is, is it understands the way that you run and your run mechanics. And I don't know if it has some sort of uh, accelerometer in it or something that uh, understands how hard you're working uh, and the impacts that are getting sent through your foot based on how tired you might be. Uh, but it figures out how hard you're working. The idea being that in your training and especially for your racing, uh, you avoid hitting the wall because then you figure out how hard you need to work relative to uh, the amount of hill climbing there is, the amount of wind there is, uh, the amount of race, the way that race conditions can always vary. Uh, it keeps you from underneath a level that would cause you to bonk or hit that wall or have the wheels kind of fall off as you are trying to finish your race. So that way you can finish stronger, finish faster. Uh, I think it's geared mainly towards ultra runners and people that are dealing with a lot of elevation change where strict mileage pacing, uh, how fast you ran over the last mile or kilometer or whatever distance, isn't going to be an accurate barometer of how well you're doing, how hard you're working, uh, and also for training as well, you're not gonna be able to know just by your paces all the time 
how hard you're working depending on whether you're doing hill repeats versus track work. And so that's kind of the idea, that's the promise, that it's gonna make you a more efficient, uh, a better trained, better disciplined racer. So when you are looking at it on your watch, you can set it up a couple of different ways. So you can look at it normally where it gives you time, distance, pace. You can even do lap timing. You could set that so that the a double button push will give you a, a lap and that works out perfectly well. I can definitely see using this for intervals. Uh, but you can also set it to give you alerts when you're over a certain power threshold. So if you're running too hard or harder than you should for your half marathon or marathon or ultra, it'll let you know and give you a warning and tell you to back off, even though maybe the mileage pace in terms of how fast you're running minutes per mile or minutes per kilometer doesn't seem like it's too fast. It'll let you know if you're working too hard or if you're not working hard enough so you can adjust accordingly. Maybe you're running at exactly the number of minutes per mile that you thought you should be running, but that power number is really low, then you can also ratchet up and say, look, I got more in the tank that I can give, and I know that I can give more without bonking later on. So uh, that's kind of the overall promise. To be able to get that kind of analytics from your data, uh, which I think is the secret sauce in something like this, if it can give you meaningful analytics like that, is you need lots of data points to pull from. So it can't know how hard you should be working unless it understands it has a history of information for you to pull from. So I wanted to do more than just a run or two with this device before I started talking about it. Uh, nine runs is probably still a little bit short and I'll give some caveats at the end in terms of some of that data, uh, but it gives me an idea of how this is kind of working and what it's kind of be like to live with this thing for a little while. But to start off, I think that I have to preface this entire video with I think I might have broken this thing. Uh, the first day that I took it out, it, we had a pretty great snowstorm and I just had a lot of fun with it. But I was running in snow that was uh, frequently, especially when getting into snow banks, over my ankles, if not up to my shins, closer towards my kneecaps. So some really tall snow banks that would kind of catch me by surprise. I wouldn't realize I was about to jump into a snow bank. But in other instances, times where the snow was about ankle level or running in slush or lake water that had washed up onto the shore. So I was getting not only the device cold, but cold and wet. And I'm not sure that this thing is waterproof. And so I, that day, the definitely the data readings were really weird. And you could tell when you're having a problem with the connection to the foot pod in uh, a couple of ways. One is when you're actually running, you could look down and it'll give you, show you like the regular run tracking screen, but it'll be kind of grayed out and it'll say connecting dot, dot, dot on it. And so I got that frequently on that first day a couple of times. Uh, and the other way that you could see it is when you go back in your analytics and look at it after the fact. Uh, that's how you could tell if something was wrong. And so for that first run, when I was running through like absolutely horrible conditions for something like a foot pod, uh, and afterwards, uh, basically I'd look down at my feet and the foot pod had like a snowball built on it because it had accumulated with the water and the slush and then running through fresh powder, uh, like a snowball's worth of snow on top of it. Um, after that day, that day, uh, the data was just completely off and completely bonkers, like 50% off. I think I ran six miles that day. It gave me like uh, three or four. Um, part of that was a little bit of user error, I think, because I think I paused my run tracking. Uh, you could long press and then reach a pause button that way. Uh, I think I messed that up. Uh, but another huge substantial portion was the thing not tracking while I was actually running. Um, and the other thing that I'm worried about is a couple of run commutes that I've done, I got very different data. So I did the exact same run like two days in a row. And uh, one day I got 5.3 miles, one day I got 5.47 miles. Even that variance is a little bit concerning uh, in terms of the amount of distance, but it has been really, really cold in Chicago. So I'm wondering if maybe the batteries are failing. So in these temperatures, my iPhone performance really starts to suffer, uh, if not just completely bonk out. Uh, the GoPro batteries definitely uh, performance suffers, if not completely go out just because of the cold. You might start with a 100% battery when you're inside and then instantly, as soon as you get outside, you're like at 30% just because of the cold and how that affects it. And the GoPro is something that I hold in my hand, so but it's in an extremity, so it's getting waved around, kind of like you're fanning it. Same thing with the foot pod. It's on your foot and you're kind of fanning it. And especially if I'm running through snow, slush, uh, that's gonna be getting wet and cold, exacerbating it. So I'm not sure in those situations where I'm losing connection, if it's the coldness that's really affecting it. But on the other hand, 
I'm not sure if this thing is learning, which is also really weird. If something has powerful analytics, I guess it can learn, but it seems to be improving. Uh, the last run that I went on the, from the footage that you just saw today, the tracing and the distance mount seem to be spot on. Uh, the pacing number seems a little bit slow compared to how hard I seem to have been working, but the power number was a little bit higher. So maybe it's right. I'm not exactly sure, but it's also kind of really hard to gauge anything right now because it's winter time. We're near record lows in Chicago in terms of temperature. And basically I am lucky enough if I could start the run and I don't really even pay attention to it. I've even turned auto pause on uh, for this thing, uh, which is something I almost never do for any of my devices because I usually prefer to manually stop things and restart things, but it's just so cold. I don't want to take my hands out of my gloves. And so I've been turning auto pause on. But today's run was, at least for distance, spot on. Uh, but you can always double check and verify the numbers that you're getting from it by checking your run afterwards. And it has a couple of cool features in terms of the data you can look at and the way it presents it to you. And so if you run with a phone, then it takes your foot pod data and pairs it to a GPS tracing that it takes while you're running. And you can look at it and one of the things it gives you is like uh, a map, like a flyover type of view of your run while also tracing the amount of power that you're using along the run. And that's interesting. But the main feature that I use it for is kind of data validation, because sometimes you'll see the tracing kind of go, and then it'll just jump to another spot. And that's telling me that uh, it lost connection for whatever that distance was, because it has data points from here to here to here to here to here, then nothing until it goes to here to here instantly. But because I've been turning auto pause on, I know that none of those our user error. And so I definitely even got it today, even though I thought that today was a relatively accurate tracing, uh, definitely got some of those jumps uh, in terms of the way that it traces. Uh, the other data that it gives you is that it gives you nice charts and graphs of your heart rate, which is pulling from my Apple Watch, cadence, uh, my uh, leg spring stiffness, which again is that meter that I think it's using accelerometers to figure out like how hard uh, or what kind of impacts are being transmitted through my feet. Uh, in other words, uh, a proxy for how good do my legs feel, how good is my form compared to normal when I'm rested versus when I'm fatigued. Uh, and so you see all that data uh, very nicely laid out and uh, it looks very pretty. I do wish that they give you an option to kind of overlay certain things like pace versus power or leg spring stiffness versus power. I haven't really figured out a way to do that because that's the way that that data is interesting for me. So I could see how like my leg spring stiffness, at least from at least till I figure out what those leg spring stiffness numbers and those power numbers really mean for me. Uh, I'd like to be able to overlay that data, but uh, not not a huge deal. It just means that I need more familiarity with this app and some of the numbers that it's generating. For me, a lot of the runs that I've been in the moderate to easy range have been in like the 200. Uh, I think it's watts, 200 W um, number for the power rating. And so that gives me an idea of, am I working hard? Am I working not hard? Um, I also brought this thing along with me for the half marathon where I didn't have my phone because I've been usually check my phone. I will bring my watch for the GPS tracing and for mile marker splits. Um, again, it was so cold for that half marathon I ran over the weekend, 13 degrees official race temp uh, that I didn't even look at it. I set it like two or three minutes before the race started. Uh, and then I just didn't look at it again until probably two or three minutes afterwards. But even then it's giving me some really weird results. And I, again, it's one of those things where I don't know if the battery failed or what. All the graphs are all goofy. Everything just looks like a triangle. Normally it kind of looks like this, uh, in terms of whether it's power, pace, cadence, uh, there's not a, most of it stays relatively constant, but these are just triangles. It's weird. And then if I look at my laps, I'll have like 10 minutes for a mile. And then the next lap it gives me, and the laps are generally set to one mile by default. The next lap that'll give me is like negative 1000 minutes. So it's just something weird happen. Again, I don't, I think I pushed it to failure in terms of temperature. Um, but I would like to be able to run another race with it, hopefully in warmer conditions. Hopefully all my races from now are warmer than that last one where I can actually look at the watch, check the power reading, see how I'm doing in terms of energy expenditure. Cause ultimately that's what I'm, I'm looking for, right? Is when I try to, my new kind of approach to racing, which is uh, use like your, your B goal as your first half of the race kind of pacing strategy and then negative split this, the second half 
towards your angle kind of uh, approach is the idea that I want to make sure I'm not using up all my aerobic reserves uh, too early and I'm not using all my anaerobic reserves too early and uh, burning myself out before the end of the race. The idea is that you burn through all those things exactly by the end of the race. And I'm hoping that something like this power meter can do that. So maybe I'm not listening to music during the race and I don't care about the GPS tracing because it's a measured course. But if I can hear different alerts and alarms telling me I'm working too hard or not hard enough, that's something that I think could be very useful information in terms of figuring out where I am in relation to a pace group or a goal time. The other thing that I notice about this foot pod is that compared to a treadmill, it makes me have to work six to 7% harder. In other words, I thought I was running like a nine minute mile uh, on the treadmill. It was telling me I was running like 930 uh, in terms of my pace. Uh, and so to get to like nine minutes or 930 on a treadmill, I had to go like 30 seconds per mile faster according to the treadmill. So that was a little bit discouraging. Uh, not that I care. Uh, and I'm starting to learn that whatever numbers the treadmill tells you is arbitrary. You just go by kind of effort and feel, which is also another quagmire in and of itself. But uh, I just have to crank it up a little bit in order to get uh, a true measure of effort expenditure, uh, which is where this stride foot pot is really interesting. Assuming the data from the foot pot itself can be trusted, which I'm not sure. I still need to be able to get out onto a track to kind of verify. And I, you don't need to calibrate it. And it tells you that one of the benefits of this thing is that it's so amazing. You never need to calibrate it. But if you do go to a track and, and try to calibrate it, uh, once things warm up, I'll probably do that uh, and try to calibrate it. So that way I can be sure that say the paces that uh, it gives me for a treadmill or paces that it gives me for a tempo run in terms of the efforts that I'm spending are really accurate. Um, so that's another thing that I look forward to. And ultimately the result is at $200, it's not something that I can recommend to everybody right now. Uh, I need to do a lot more testing uh, in the app itself. It'll, it's now to the point where it's starting to give me some analytics and it could it's like telling me, here's what you did for the last week, great job, or it gives you like encouragement. But it also tells you, you need about two months of data for it to give you real meaningful analytics, which is a long time. And I, I think beyond the return period uh, for a device like this um, to test it out and wear on your shoes. I sometimes forget. So the two, I had one rest day and the other day that I didn't use this up, the 11 days I had, uh, I just forgot that it was on another shoe and I went running. And so like, that's something that for me, someone who flips through shoes frequently, um, and most people I think have two or three shoes that they're rotating between in any given week, just yet another part of the routine that I have to remember. But for now, I like it enough that for the winter, the winter, I don't really care about my paces so much. I care about distance. I care about total running time. I'm trying to just build a ton of aerobic base over the winter. Just get out there and run miles, stay healthy. Don't be sick. That's kind of the goal. Um, I don't care if it's spot on accurate. I, I can wait until the spring when uh, things thaw out a little bit here in Chicago and I can get to a track and try to do some calibrations and revisit some of these pace numbers and the power numbers in that regard. Uh, but I do wanna just have it and run with it even despite that in the winter time, just so it can understand me better and I can have more data points to pull from. So that way later on, I can hopefully have a lot more meaningful information. I'm still not coached, very obviously uh, not coached by anyone. And so this is kind of like, uh, uh, like a computerized way of doing it, which for a running YouTuber, isn't that perfect. Uh, so uh, we'll see how it, how it does over the next two months can't give it, like I said, I can't give it a recommendation yet, but it is something that I am gonna be trying uh, for the next couple of months. It's working well enough at this point for me now that I can at least trust it to continue putting more effort and putting more data into it. The other thing is uh, when I first thought about getting this foot pod, I put out like poll on Instagram and I was like, all right, what do you guys wanna see next? Do you want me to see looking at a stride foot pod or do you want me to see looking at like a Zwift foot pod and, and, and doing that, uh, knowing that winter is upon us and a lot of people are hitting the treadmill. Um, and I didn't realize it was gonna be, it didn't have to be an either or because I think, and I have to look into it further, that the stride foot pod also is compatible with Zwift. So that might be something that I also look into later on uh, especially in the winter time as it's going to be ridiculously cold in Chicago uh, for I think a long time uh, with a couple of breaks I think by this tomorrow is going to be uh, rec almost record setting like once in a lifetime type of 
lows and highs. And Sunday is gonna be like 60 degrees warmer. It's gonna be in the 40s. We're in for a little bit of a roller coaster of a winter, but that is Midwestern weather for you. Uh, Arctic record setting cold one day and then above highs a couple days later. Uh, just have to live with it. Um, if you have any questions about the stride foot pod for me at this point, let me know. Feel free to put them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys a little bit more. For those that have been using it a little bit more, I'd love to hear about your experiences as well in terms of it figuring you out and learning about your running and your running mechanics and that power number and if it's been useful for you. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, before I go for today, I want to talk about today's charity runner for the day. Today's charity runner is Dwan Brown, uh, who is I Just Look Kenyan on Instagram, which is a fantastic Instagram uh, name. And he's running for Salute Inc., so which that is my favorite charity. That's the one that I'll be running for uh, in the 2019 Chicago Marathon. He's going to be running the 2019 Chicago Marathon too. Uh, and Salute Inc. is a charity that helps uh, military veterans transition from military life back to civilian life with anything that they might need from training, education, but most importantly, sometimes just some cash to help them get through the end of the month and make it through that transition because uh, it can be difficult uh, from one life to another. Uh, it's a great way of saying thanks to those uh, who have risked so much uh, to give us uh, the comforts that we have so I can talk about $200 foot pods. I've given $10 to Joan and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more about Salute Inc. or if you want to help uh, support uh, Salute Inc.'s cause. That's all I have for today everybody. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?